Hi, in this video I'm going to teach you about enumerations. Enumerations are integers that are represented by words. Actually, it's a long, not an integer. The data type is long. Basically, it's a number, a whole number, that is represented by a word that makes it easier to work with. So I'm going to give you an example of what I mean. So the first thing I want to do for an enumeration is I want to declare it. I want to create the enumeration. And so what I've done is I want to put whether the enumeration is private or public, what is its scope, use the keyword enum, and then I just give it a name. So I've called this enum flowers. You can call it whatever you want. You know, and you don't have to have this enum prefix. That's just how I do it. And so then what I need to do is just add my members to this list. So I'm just going to put some flower names in here. So now I've got four flowers, four members in my enumeration. So let me give you an example of using this enumeration. So let me just create a procedure called get flowers. And then what I want to do is create a variable of type enum flowers. So I'm just going to create a variable called flowers and I'm going to make it type enum flowers. So you see here, because I have declared this enumeration, because I've created it up here, I now have a new data type available to me in my IntelliSense dropdown that is type enum flowers. So I've created a variable called eFlowers and I've declared it to be type enum flowers. And so what that allows me to do is when I want to set the value of eFlowers, I get this list. When I hit the equal sign, I'll get this list that is all of the members that I have assigned to this enumeration. And then all I have to do is pick one of these. So I just want to show you one thing about data types real quick. If I were to create another variable, let's just call it eFlowers2, and say I declared this to be type long, which is perfectly fine because these, as we said, enumerations are, are longs. They're of long data type. So if I try to assign a value to this variable, you see when I hit the equal sign, I don't get the list of all of my enum members like I did if I declare it to be of type enum flowers. But this is perfectly valid. It's fine. I can assign, I, I can absolutely do this. I can just assign it that way. And this code will work perfectly fine because again, these are of type long, but if I don't declare it to be of type enum flowers of the type that I created, then I'm not going to get that list in my IntelliSense because the IDE has no idea that you want it to be of this type. To the IDE, it's just a long. Okay, let me show you how you could use this. So if I put in an if statement that says if the flower is equal to a rose, then I'm just going to put a message here in the immediate window that says a flower is a rose. And if it's not a rose, then I'm just going to put a message that says no flower. So now if I run this code, let me just take this out, comment it out right now so we don't get confused. So if I run this code, we should expect to see no flower because we have set the flower type to be eDaisy. So if I run this, we see no flower. If I change the flower type to a rose, then we get the message the flower is a rose. Let's take a look at what is happening here. So if we open our locals window and we run this code, I'll put a breakpoint right here. Okay, you'll see right off the bat that eFlower is set to eRows. Um, why? Why is that? Because we've stopped before we've executed this assignment statement. So why is it saying that it's equal to eRows? And the answer is because of the way that the values here are assigned. As we said, each of these is actually a long. And if I hover my mouse over it, you'll see that there's a value assigned. E rose is zero, E lily is one, E daisy is two, and E petunia is three. So when I declare this variable, it doesn't have a value to begin with. The default value is zero. And that's what it's equal to before I even execute this assignment statement. So let's step through this code and we'll come back to that in just a second, but let's step through this code. So um, now you see we, we have actually assigned it here. 
I didn't, it didn't change the value, but we did assign it. And now we have if e flowers is equal to e rows, then that's a true statement. So we are going to print out this statement here. Okay, and so if I change this value to a daisy, then let's run it again and see what happens. So now you see again, the value is e rows. And again, that's because we have declared the variable, but we have not yet assigned a value to it. But because e rows has a value of zero, that's what's getting assigned as the default. And so if I step through this, and now we see it's assigned the value of e daisy. And then if we do our comparison, now we see that it's not, e flower is not equal to e row. So we're going to execute the else statement. I want to show you that this also works perfectly fine, this one, where we're creating a variable of type long and assigning one of our enum values to it. So I just need to change this to match this variable name. And now if I step through this code, now you see this one is still, because this one is still here, it's still e rows because this is zero, but because this is of type long, it's just going to have the value zero, you know, which is equal to this. It's the, de the default value is zero. But if I step through this, um, you see we get no flower. Okay. And so, but let me change this to rows, change this back to rows and do it again. And you'll see that this time it does work, right? Because um, e flowers zero is equal to this, this enumeration value, zero. So it does work. You can assign it to a long. It will definitely work. It's just more convenient if you have the names usually. But you know, sometimes you have situations where you would want to do it that way. Okay, so I wanted to come back to the values that are getting assigned to these enumerations. So as we saw, if we do not assign values to these members, variables. It's going to start at zero and it's just going to increment. The value is going to be zero for rose, one for lily, two for daisy, and three for petunia. But we can change those values if we would like to. So say I wanted to make rose the value is 10, lily is a value of 25, daisy is a value of 100, and petunia is a value of 14. Now I have explicitly assigned the values that I want for these enum members. So let me show you in the immediate window what the values are. So let me run the code and just stop it. And then I'm going to print out the value of each of these. So you see the value of E rose is 10 as expected. The value of E lily is 25. The value of Daisy is 100 and the value of Petunia is 14. So you see that we can assign the values. And because these are actually numbers, we can perform mathematical operations with them. So say I wanted to say what is E rose plus E daisy. And it's 110 because the value of rose is 10 and the value of daisy is 100. So it doesn't make a lot of sense in this context, but there are certain contexts where maybe you would want to perform some math. I also did want to show you, even though this is called rows, you can't really get at that name because as we discussed, the value is a number. So if you wanted to get the name, you'd have to write some kind of select case statement. So let me give you an example of that. Say I had a select case on my e flowers variable. Okay. And so then I had case rows. Oops, I need another variable up here. Um, I'm going to call it s flowers. And that's going to be a string. And so I'm going to say if the enumeration is e rows, then the string name for the flower is rows. And I'm going to do that for all of the others as well. And then I'm just going to print out the name of the flower based on this select statement. So then if I run this code, you see that I have set the value to daisy. And so we would expect this statement to execute and I should get the word daisy printed down here in my immediate window. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> see, I got the wrong variable there. I put e flowers. That needs to be s flowers. And so let's run this again. Okay, daisy. And then I can change it. Let's make it a lily. And I'll run it again. 
and now I get the lily. So that's how you would get the name out. You can't actually get at these names. So I think that's it for enumerations. Obviously there is a little bit more that could be said about enumerations, you know, if you really, really wanted to get deep into it, but this should give you a nice overview of how you can use enumerations in your code to make things a little bit easier when you're coding and also to make your code easier to understand when you or someone else is reading it later. Thank you for watching my video and be sure to check out my others.